Today here on Live Now from Fox, uh, we are following the latest. Uh, this is out of uh, personnel moves at the White House. The White House is withdrawing the nomination of David Chipman to lead ATF. I'm being joined right now by Stephen Gutowski. He's the founding editor of The Reload that covers all things uh, firearms and the gun uh, industry and policy and politics. Stephen, uh, so good to see you. Um, you did some extensive reporting on David Shipman. Why did the White House pull his nomination? Yeah, well, essentially, they couldn't get the 50 votes needed to push him through the Senate. Uh, it came down to getting all 50 of the senators who caucus with the Democrats to vote for him, and, and they simply couldn't secure enough votes to make it happen after all the Republicans came out in opposition and they had trouble from some of the moderate members like Angus King of Maine and Joe Manchin of West Virginia. And even before uh, his confirmation hearings, we did hear from Republicans they thought he was too, uh, you know, pro restrictions on firearms, uh, that he was uh, a prominent gun control advocate. But there were some allegations that you reported on, uh, especially regarding possible racist remarks that he made uh, in his personnel file. We don't know the extent of those, but can you give us a sense of, you know, what your sources were telling you when he was up for this? Yes, certainly. Uh, I was able to speak with two current and former ATF agents who corroborated the existence of a, a story that Shipman had uh, denigrated black agents uh, who passed a promotion assessment, said that they must have cheated. Uh, and then in a separate story, a separate incident, uh, I spoke with a black agent directly who claimed that Shipman had initiated an investigation against him, claiming that he had cheated on a, uh, a promotion assessment by answering the questions too well. The Department of Justice confirmed that Shipman was involved in a uh, investigation. He did initiate an investigation against an agent in 2007. They did not give any further details on that investigation. The agent claims he was exonerated by it, but it's currently confidential. We don't know the full details of what happened in that investigation. Uh, the DOJ obviously also uh, denied that Chipman has any form of racial bias, uh, but the agent who I spoke with said he believes that the incident was racially motivated. And Stephen, I just want to read the statement the White House put out uh, from, uh, partly from Chipman. He said, uh, I have spent my entire career working to combat the scourge of gun violence, and I remain deeply committed to that work. The White House is chalking this up to Republican opposition in Congress, and it kind of underscores the fact, you know, why has the Senate not confirmed an ATF director in the last several years? What has been the holdup for this agency? Right. Well, obviously, the White House is being a little bit disingenuous there because they didn't need Republican support to get uh, his nomination through. They only need 50 votes uh, plus a tiebreaker from the vice president. Uh, but, you know, certainly there was united Republican opposition, but the real key here was was Democratic opposition to his nomination. But generally speaking, the position became a confirmable position back in 2006. And there's only been a single confirmed ATF director in that time period. Most of the time, the agency has been run as it is now by an acting director who's appointed by the president for a period of a year. So there is certainly some legitimacy to the idea that this is a very difficult position to get confirmed because of the politics of gun control in America. Obviously, there's quite a lot of vetting that goes in to picking a candidate for this. And if they have positions that aren't satisfactory to at least 50 senators, they're not gonna make it through it. Even President Trump tried to get a director through while there was a Republican controlled Senate and he failed as well. So it's not uncommon to see something like this happen, but President Biden certainly pushed the boundaries uh, intentionally, I would say, to get someone who is, was, is literally a paid gun control activist into that position and it simply didn't work. Uh, and Stephen, I just want to uh, correct myself. That statement I was reading was from President Biden. Uh, he said that he has spent his entire career working to combat the scourge of gun violence. He remains deeply committed to that work. We cannot fail to mention, though, that David Shipman uh, has denied uh, all these allegations uh, against him. Um, it kind of 
also underscores the fact that the Biden administration, as they are working to staff these agencies, uh, this is, I think, one of two very high-profile nominations they've had to withdraw, the other coming to mind near a Tandon from the Office of Management and Budget. She was up for that. They had to withdraw that. Uh, do you think it's getting enough attention? Uh, yeah, no, that's an interesting question. Uh, well, first, I would say that Chipman himself has not spoken publicly about these uh, allegations of, of, you know, racial uh, misconduct or, or things like that. Uh, the DOJ has denied that he has uh, a racial bias, but but he hasn't actually come out and spoken yet. The Republicans actually wanted a second hearing to ask him questions about these uh, stories that came out after his first hearing, but uh, the the judiciary chairman, uh, Dick Durbin, denied that request. Um, I, but in addition, uh, you know, I, I would say that it, it'll be interesting to see where the president goes from here with this position, who he's going to pick to try and replace Chipman and, and what he does with Chipman. They said that they're going to actually offer him uh, a different role in the administration that doesn't require confirmation from the Senate. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what that position is going to be. But clearly, the White House is not uh, backing away from having him involved in, in some form. All right, and we will uh, leave it at that. Stephen Gutowski from The Reload, we appreciate your time and thanks for uh, the reporting that you've done on this and uh, for telling us this story. We'll see you again. All right, so and, uh, we thank Stephen Gutowski from The Reload for bringing us that story. Uh, we're just taking a live look at the Capitol, Capitol Hill right now. It does remain to be seen uh, who President Biden and the administration will pick uh, as a new nominee to lead the agency of ATF. They have quite a broad mandate. They do a lot uh, of good work. And so uh, it remains to be seen that uh, they still will operate under an acting director for the time being.